Hey, what is up, guys? It's Thundershark115, and today, this is gonna be my response to Terragon's response to my response to Terragon's terrible video on Elden Ring. Yeah, he really wasn't happy about my response that I made to him, and so he made this 45-minute video. The title of this video is called, It's Wrong to Not Like Elden Ring According to Thunderstruck115, which, you know, we're already running into three issues before we even start the video. The first one is that his title is a blatant lie, as I never once said that you weren't allowed to not like Elden Ring. In fact, I even stated in the video that, you know, if you prefer other games to Elden Ring, that is perfectly fine. The problem, though, is that the criticisms he was trying to levy were really terrible fucking criticisms. Second of all, his thumbnail is using the stock image lightning bolt profile picture that I used to have and not my current one, which, you know, I've had for at least a month before I'd even heard of Terragon, much less responded to him. And third, he's got my name over his profile picture and his his name over mine. You know, A plus fucking work, my guy. Now, the last time that I did a responseception video, I had multiple comments saying that they weren't sure which version of me was which. So to make things simple, the past version of me is the one playing Armored Core 6, while this current version of me is the one playing Dead Space. And just for further clarification, I'll also put one of my sprites over my current self as well. Now, we're gonna skip past the first four minutes of this dude's video because it's pretty fucking pointless. He spends about two minutes just comparing editing for some reason, and then the next two minutes are just my video without any sort of interruption or commentary from him, and it doesn't really seem like it's relevant to any of his responses. So we're gonna skip to the juicy bit, seeing as his video is already 45 minutes long. You go around a huge environment that only serves one purpose, Dark Souls, again, only now it's more open, and suddenly it's different. Are you fucking serious? Well, seeing as Elden Ring is the first time we've ever had a Souls game take place in an open world like this, yeah, I'd say that is different. Every Souls game prior to Elden Ring had a Metroidvania-style world design, with the exception of Demon Souls, which had the five-level structure. Plus, those previous Souls games were a lot more railroaded, whereas the open-world design of Elden Ring gives you a lot of freedom as to how you tackle the game's objectives. Let's assess the aspects, people, because I'm having a hard time seeing why people put this this game up like it's the coming of Jesus. I'm Blind Beard the Pirate. <laughs> You're gonna sit there and get on my video editing skills, because he was like, the video's eh. Later on in the video, you're gonna hear him get on my editing and stuff like that, but then look at his editing. Your editing ain't exactly perfect, so I wouldn't talk. That's a nice argument, Senator. Why don't you back it up with a source? My source is that I made it the fuck up. You know, if you could provide an example of me complaining about your editing in my original video, please do so, because I never once did that shit. When I said your video was just eh, I was referring to the commentary and criticism you were giving in the video, not your fucking editing. Like, the closest that I come to making fun of your editing is complaining about how loud the fucking audio is, but even then, I think that's less of an issue with your editing and more the fact that you feel the need to constantly scream into your mind like a coked out banshee. Otherwise, no, I did not say shit about your editing. Maybe Moment of Sanity did, maybe Batacanta did, but I did not. But you know, while we're on the topic of your editing, I want to give you some constructive criticism for this video. See, I noticed that the logo that YouTube puts in the corner of my videos is present in yours, so that means that you screen recorded it using something like OBS. My suggestion is that you don't do that because then you get a huge quality loss in the video and audio quality because of YouTube's compression algorithm. Instead, you should download the video using a tool like I use WinX YouTube Downloader. That way you don't get the quality loss from YouTube's compression algorithm. Like, it is not a subtle difference at all, my guy. Like, let me play a clip from both videos so you can hear the difference. Plus, those previous Souls games were a lot more railroaded, whereas the open world design of Elden Ring gives you a lot of freedom as to how you tackle the game's objectives. Plus, those previous Souls games were a lot more railroaded, whereas the open world design of Elden Ring gives you a lot of freedom as to how you tackle the game's objectives. Again, your video editing ain't exactly perfect, so I wouldn't talk. We heard you just fine the first time. You don't need to repeat yourself. All right, you want to go, Thunderstruck? Let's go. So, Elden Ring doesn't do much with its open world design. A lot of the open world design inside of Elden Ring consists of a lot of things that have to do with an action RPG design. 
yeah, it's almost like Elden Ring is an action RPG, so of course they're going to make the world design suit the gameplay. Not necessarily an open world design. You see, it has an open environment that it only serves one purpose, and the main purpose is action and fighting. The main purpose is not open world like exploration or activities like Skyrim. Because this game isn't Skyrim, those are two completely different genres. Like, yeah, Elden Ring might have some RPG mechanics, but the focus isn't on role playing like it is in Skyrim. Furthermore, the way that you say it services action RPG design and not open world design leads me to believe that you think that open world design is something that's mutually exclusive with action RPG design, which is just blatantly false. The whole point of level design in a video game, which includes design of open worlds, is to service the gameplay mechanics. Something that Elden Ring very much does. And while I haven't played Skyrim, I would assume that that game's open world services the gameplay mechanics of that game. If you were to put Skyrim's mechanics into Elden Ring's world, it wouldn't work. And if you were to put Elden Ring's mechanics into Skyrim's open world, it wouldn't work. Furthermore, you try claiming that Elden Ring doesn't have open world exploration, which, like I explained in my original video on you, is just complete horseshit. There is plenty of shit to find and do in Elden Ring's open world. In Skyrim, there are NPCs with dialogue choices, actual options. There's different aspects to its open world design, and a lot of it has to do with exploration, and it rewards you for exploring. In Elden Ring, it does let you explore, to fight. It does let you roam, to fight. It does let you see new things, to fight. That is literally mainly what they utilize their supposed open world design for. And I say supposed because, really, that's not necessarily an open world design that's designed for exploration. Now this dude is just digging up and switching the goalposts because in his original video he was saying, Her der, the open world is only ever used for fighting. But now he's saying it does have a bunch of other open world activities, but now his argument is, oh, but it's all done in service of fighting. Like, dude. I could use that exact same logic for almost any open world game I can think of. For example, in Just Cause 3, the core of the gameplay is killing enemies and blowing shit up. And wouldn't you know, the design of the open world in Just Cause 3 is to get you to kill enemies and blow shit up. In RPG like Skyrim, you know, the focus is on the role-playing elements, so the open world is designed to get you to engage with said role-playing elements. Far Cry's gameplay revolves around combat and arcade stealth, so the design of the open world is in service of combat and arcade stealth. So naturally, when you have Elden Ring, a Souls game where the focus of the game is on fighting other enemies in its tactical style of combat, no fucking shit the open world design is going to be in service of that goal. Probably because Elden Ring is by far the most refined that a Souls game has ever been. Like, play Demon Souls or Dark Souls 1 or 2, and then go play Elden Ring and it's a night and day difference. First off, the combat system is the exact same combat design seen in from software games. My god! This is repetitive, because if you play second mode, Bloodborne, Dark Souls 1, fuck, if you play Elden Ring, ah! Christ, my fucking ears. Yeah, for the sake of not giving tinnitus to everybody who watches this video, I'm gonna lower the volume of this dude's video so it doesn't blow out y'all's eardrums. But back to what he was saying, yeah, the core of the combat design is the same as Dark Souls or Bloodborne, but at the same time, that's kind of how sequels tend to work. But that doesn't mean Elden Ring's combat design didn't innovate on top of that. For example, you can now jump, which allows you to do jumping attacks. There's the new guard counter. There's the Ashes of War system. There's also the Spirit Ashes, which you can use to summon a variety of different NPCs to help you, which, by the way, is different from the regular summoning mechanic that's been around since Demon Souls. There's the stance breaking mechanic. And of course, there's a bunch of new enemies and bosses to fight. I can keep going on, but I think I'll get the point. It's designed for fighting. A slim possibility. No, I'm being real. Yeah. That's about right. I'm not trolling in the video. I'm being dead ass serious. This game is overrated as hell, and people have put it up when Firm Software has been duplicating the exact same fundamental mechanics that they utilize in the very first Dark Souls, and they have been utilizing this in other games. And my guy, you could make that same claim for damn near any game franchise that has multiple installments. The fundamental gameplay mechanics are the same, but they've added and changed a bunch of shit in each entry so that it feels different. And I literally listed off a bunch of examples of how Elden Ring is different from previous Souls games. Like, this is the same dumbass argument that Reforged Gaming was making against Halo Infinite, and that Kim Jong-un was making against Tears of the Kingdom, so I'm gonna tell you the same thing I told them. Not every video game sequel needs to reinvent the fucking wheel. It just needs to add and change enough to be a clear improvement over the original, which is, you know, what Elden Ring is. I already listed several new or differing mechanics in its combat system that older Souls games didn't have. Not to mention, this is the only Souls game to take place in a fucking open world. So, uh, is that different enough for you? They haven't changed or evolved it, and yet people praise it up and put it up like it's the coming of Jesus, and it makes no sense to me. Man, this guy really is Blindbeard the Pirate because in the very previous segment of my video that he showed, I literally listed several fucking examples of how Elden Ring's gameplay evolved from previous Souls games. Okay, first off, what the hell is with that music? It sounds like two robots. 
malfunctioning. The my music sounds like robots malfunctioning? Bruh, if anything, that's your fucking music, since it's probably one of the most generic-ass techno beats I can think of. The very first time a Souls-like game has ever taken place in an open world. I see. It's too bad they didn't utilize the open world design like Ubisoft games have. That's right. I'm here to admit it to you. Go ahead and flame me and call it a hot take, but Ubisoft utilizes their open world design. Hardly. Like, 90% of the space in most Ubisoft open worlds could be cut out completely and you could still comfortably fit all the content into the game. Why? Because they blatantly tell you where everything is and the rest of the space is just completely fucking meaningless. Whereas Elden Ring actually wants you to explore its open world. And while I'm not gonna say that Elden Ring doesn't have any negative empty space, it certainly utilizes the space it has a hell of a lot better than not just Ubisoft games, but about 99% of open world games on the market right now. Bethesda utilizes their open world design. Farm Software only utilizes it for one singular purpose, and that's action, so you might as well have just made it a linear action RPG. Except then, you wouldn't get the benefits that Elden Ring has by being an open world game. Like better exploration, and more choice about how you tackle objectives. Even if those open world activities are mainly done to service the combat, which is, you know, the whole point of a fucking Souls game, the way the game utilizes its open world to service the combat can't really be done with a linear game, at least not as effectively. You just said that my video was terrible, but look at your editing. Your editing ain't exactly perfect, so I wouldn't talk. Yeah, that's why you shouldn't talk shit, because look at your editing skills. They ain't exactly perfect. So I, again, I, w I really wouldn't be talking if I were you. I really have no idea why the fuck we're just suddenly talking about my editing all of a sudden, but, you know, if there genuinely is an issue that you can find with my editing, please point it out to me. But, spoiler alert, he doesn't. Ah, the most refined as a Souls game has ever been. Yeah, in terms of its combat mechanics, all they did was take the exact same combat system and refine it, but they didn't add anything new to it. So that means you have the exact same combat as Dark Souls 3, right? That's an oxymoronic statement. If Elden Ring refines its combat system compared to Dark Souls 3, then that means it has to make changes and additions to improve it, which again, I list several. And seeing as you use Dark Souls 3 as an example that took the combat of Dark Souls 1 and made it more refined, and you seem to frame that in the positive light, then clearly Elden Ring did exactly what you fucking wanted since it added and changed plenty of shit compared to Dark Souls 3 so that it stands out more even if it is ultimately the same core at the end of the day. The same amount of attacks and the same amount of techniques in the exact same combat system, except all they took, all they did was take it and just make it more refined. That's the same combat. You didn't add anything to it. You didn't evolve it. You didn't add new combos. Okay, first of all, your microphone is not edible, please stop putting it in your mouth. Second of all, refining the gameplay loop, in this case the combat, is what a lot of fucking sequels do. In fact, if anything, I'd say Elden Ring added and changed the most from any From Software game out there. Like, any Souls players out there, I just want you to sit down and think about how much each Souls game added to the previous one. Like, how much did Dark Souls 1 really add to Demon Souls? There's the plunging attack, the kick attack, and the jump attack, which, by the way, is different from the one in Elden Ring. Oh, and if you want to count it, there's also the Estus system. Dark Souls 2 changed the healing system again and added power wielding. That's pretty much it. But compare Elden Ring to Dark Dark Souls 3, there's quite a lot of shit that they fucking added. Combine that with the fact that Elden Ring is now in an open world, and it's by far the biggest evolution and step forward for any fucking Souls game. Probably because Elden Ring is by far the most refined that a Souls game has ever been. Like, play Demon Souls or Dark Souls 1 or 2, and then go play Elden Ring, and it's a night and day difference. Oh, playing Dark Souls 2, and it's a night and day difference? Oh, sure. Sure. They are so similar, it's ridiculous. And they are all similar. And that even goes for Sekiro now. Now, I've never played Sekiro myself, but literally everybody that I have talked to who has tells me that Sekiro has quite a lot of differences from Dark Souls. So much so to the point where there's even an ongoing debate about whether Sekiro should be considered a Souls game or not. When there is a very large group of people arguing that it shouldn't even be in the same classification as games like Dark Souls and Elden Ring, that is plenty enough for me to know that Sekiro has a different style of gameplay and combat. I'll give you this. I do like Sekiro. I do like Sekiro, but Sekiro is similar to Dark Souls as well. There, I said it. They're all similar. That goes for Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 3, Demon Souls, Dark Souls 1. They are all similar. However, I love Dark Souls 1, I love Demon Souls, 
All right? So, there, and I like Sekiro. I like it. I don't love it. I just like it. All right? So, I, I got some firm software games that I got a soft spot for. Does that mean that Elder Ring is groundbreaking? Does that mean that Elder Ring is revolutionary? No. Like I said before, the fact that this is the first and so far the only Souls game to take place within an open world, that is revolutionary, at least for the series. Especially when it does its open world design better than 99% of other open world games. I've already explained why both in this video and the previous one, and I don't feel like repeating myself here. <laughs> but back to what he was saying, yeah, the core of the combat design is the same as Dark Souls or Bloodborne, but at the same time, that's kind of how sequels tend to work. But that doesn't mean Elden Ring's combat design didn't innovate on top of that. For example, you can now jump, which allows you to do jumping attacks. There's the new guard counter. There's the Ashes of War system. Whoa! Stand back, everybody. In Elden Ring, you can now jump. You can also crouch and use stealth. Oh shit, yeah, that's something else Elden Ring added that I completely forgot to mention in my original video. You know, thank you Terragon for helping me prove my point. Yeah, and you, you can't play in different ways by the way. You can only stealth one time with that one person, everybody else is alerted, so there's literally no stealth mechanics whatsoever. Yeah, that's because Elden Ring is not a fucking stealth game, but the stealth mechanics that do exist in the game, however limited they may be, can help you start off the encounter at an advantage. Something that did not exist in previous Souls games, but if you want more in-depth stealth mechanics, go play something like Dishonored. Now, you see, that's why you should have seen my review. I have a review on Elden Ring not being revolutionary, and I pointed out the Ashes of War and said that that's good, but it's flawed. Here's why. Because it doesn't give you new combat techniques. It doesn't give Give you new combat techniques. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> you cannot be fucking serious, my guy. The Ashes of War do give you new combat techniques. That's literally what the whole fucking point of the system is. It literally imbues your weapon with a special attack that you couldn't do otherwise, and this system literally never fucking existed in any previous Souls game. Like, Christ almighty, this dude's video makes Under the Mayo's take on Elden Ring look intelligent. It's only a bonus attack move, and you can only equip one at a time. Now this dude's contradicting his own statement that he made not even two fucking seconds ago. Like, two seconds ago, you said it didn't give you any new combat combat techniques, and now you're saying it gives you a bonus attack move. Like, my brother in Christ, you really need to learn how to keep that same energy. So again, I failed to see the fact that Elden Ring did so much with its open world design, and I also failed to see the fact that it did so much with its combat mechanics. Wanna try that again? I literally bring up an example of a new mechanic that exists within Elden Ring's combat that didn't exist in any previous Souls game, and he's still trying to claim that Elden Ring didn't do anything new with its combat system. You know, maybe if the Ashes of War system was the only thing that Elden Ring added to the Souls combat loop, then maybe you'd have a point? But I'm about to list a bunch of other shit that Elden Ring did new with its combat system, but you cut me off to make it convenient for you. There's also the Spirit Ashes, which you can use to summon a variety of different NPCs to help you, which, by the way, is different from the regular summoning mechanic that's been around since Demon Souls. There's the Stance Breaking mechanic. And, of course, there's a bunch of new enemies and bosses to fight. I could keep going on, but I think y'all get the point. And then he doesn't even bother responding to any of the other examples I bring up. WHY IS THIS HAPPENING?! WHY ARE THEY REPEATING THE SAME SHIT, ASSETS, and ANIMATIONS, AND WHY AM I YELLING?! I don't know, you tell me why you're yelling, but honestly, I'd prefer it if you didn't so that you wouldn't blow out my fucking ears. But as to why they're repeating assets and animations, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Oh please, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That is a poor excuse for, ju for um, validating game design decisions that just repeat the same formula because it's successful. I was talking about the assets and the animations in that clip, you fucking troglodyte. I would rather developers spend their time focused on improving the actual gameplay, you know, the part that matters in a video game, more than making sure that every fucking asset is unique, or that every animation is different from the previous game. Also, if you're really gonna get this ass mad about developers repeating successful formulas and just iterating on it and improving it with each new release, then uh, I better see you taking issue with the majority of video game sequels.
Mission failed. We'll get them next time. Like, I would rather From Software spend its development time developing new content for the game rather than making sure that each animation is different from the last game. Well, here's the thing. People claim this game is so groundbreaking. It's so revolutionary. Are you fucking kidding me? What did it even do with its open world design? What did it do new, even with its combat system? This overused ass combat system that has been utilized in so many games and now, oh look, it's being utilized in an open world where they don't even do open world shit. You don't have open world activities, freedom, NPCs with quest lines, dialogue options, RPG mechanics, environmental interactivity. Where the fuck is it? Dude, literally everything that you just mentioned is an Elden Ring. Open world activities are in the game, just because it's not like Far Cry where it immediately spells out every single thing you can do right from the get-go doesn't mean they aren't there. Freedom? It's an open world game. Now, granted, there are some progression gates, like you have to defeat two Great Room bosses in order to gain access to Landell, but even with that, the open world design of Elden Ring gives you a lot of freedom. For example, if you're really struggling on a certain certain boss or a certain section and you need a break or you want to go level up and get better shit, you can leave, go do something else in the open world, and then come back to them later. Okay, so I just want to quickly address this text blurb he puts on screen. Leveling up and leaving a boss is in Dark Souls 1, you do realize that, right? And that game was linear. First of all, it's completely different in a game like Dark Souls 1, where you can just leave and level up by grinding out the same enemies in the same sections earlier over and over to level up before retrying the boss, versus Elden Ring, which allows you to just fuck off somewhere else into the world and try a completely different section of the game before coming back. Second of all, even if there were a few instances of this in Dark Souls 1, it is nowhere near to the same extent as Elden Ring. Which, uh, weren't you complaining earlier that this game wasn't utilizing its open world design, and yet here it is, utilizing its open world design. In fact, when I was reading the comments in Moment of Sanity's video on you, I learned from one of the commenters that you can actually skip Stormvale Castle by finding a secret passage that leads around it. I used to thought bosses like Margit and Godric the Grafted were mandatory, but they're not. Whereas in a game like Dark Souls 1, about 90% of the bosses in that game are mandatory. And unless you pick the master key as your starting item, you don't really have that much choice as to which order you tackle the bosses until about two-thirds of the way into the game where you're then allowed to tackle the four lord souls in any order you want. But otherwise, you will have to go from the Asylum Demon, to the Taurus Demon, to the Bell Gargoyles, to the Capra Demon, to the Gaping Dragon, to Quailag. Dialogue options and NPCs with quest lines, like, do I even justify that with a response, seeing as there's plenty of examples I can point to, like Millicent or Ranny the Witch. Environmental interactivity, my guy, this is probably the best example of it in a fucking Souls game out there. And RPG mechanics, you know, you have the character creation tool, you got fucking stats, you have a wide variety of different equipment options that you can use based on whatever stats you have. Like, bro, everything you fucking listed is in the game, so where's the problem? What is the problem? Actually, no. Elden Ring does not have the same level of design as something like Skyrim, where you actually have dialogue choices and options, or something like Elder Scrolls in general, so or something like an Ubisoft game, you know? In Elder Scrolls, not only do you have dialogue choices, but different people have different functions of AI. You don't really have stuff like that in Elden Ring. Each person that you meet in Elden Ring only says one quote of dialogue. There aren't really options or choices of that magnitude. Nope, wrong again. There are numerous dialogue options in Elden Ring. There's a bunch of NPC quest lines such as Randy the Witch, Millicent, or that one Jar dude. And they also do have certain functions other than just story. For example, there's the blacksmith who's stuck in the round table hold who just keeps smithing your stuff because that's all he knows how to do. And there's a quest with him and this one one chick, I forget her name, but she does spirit tuning for you. In Stormvale Castle, there's an NPC you can find called Nefeli Lu, and if you help her, she will actually be available for you to summon to fight Godric the Grafted. Again, if you're not discovering the NPC dialogue options by doing their quest lines, then uh, that's on fucking you, my dude. <laughs> Oh, the best example, but you couldn't give any examples of environmental interactivity. Now, what do I mean by environmental interactivity? I'll tell you what I mean. So, in a game like Assassin's Creed Syndicate, 
you can literally throw a knife at a barrel and that causes it to crash and kill other people environmental interactivity in batman begins you can throw your batarang at an environment or area and you can destroy a bunch of objects or cause a lot of things to collide within each other assassin's creed syndicate that is environmental interactivity batman begins that is environmental interactivity elden ring that does not have that level of environmental interactivity. It doesn't allow you to complete missions in different ways. It doesn't allow you to interact with the environment. That's not in the game. Elden Ring actually utilizes this open world environment for exploration because you asked me to give examples, I'm giving them to you. Now All right, this is kind of starting to get on my nerves, but could you please edit out those gasps for breath? But back on topic, if you want examples of environmental interactivity, how about when you defeat Radagon, it summons a fucking meteor which blows open a giant fucking crater in the ground, allowing you to explore the underground. Or the fact that there's some castle, I forget which one, but there's a rack of boulders, and if you break it open, it'll roll and kill a bunch of enemies for you. Meanwhile, there's a bunch of physics objects all around the place which you can break open and interact with. So there you go, Tarragon. Not only does it utilize its open world for exploration, but the enemies have actual dialogue and options within dialogue choices. Not only that, but whenever you talk to NPCs or see NPCs, they have something called a routine. So the actual AI of them has actual routines. In Elden Ring, the, a lot of the enemies that you speak to, they only say the same quotes of dialogue. In Skyrim, they move around. They have different routines. They move around and do different things. Well, at the very least, I can safely say that Terragon makes one actual argument. A pretty small one, mind you, but admittedly, it would be cool to see the NPCs just doing more shit casually than just standing around, so I'll give that one to you. <laughs> combat system is the exact same combat design as Dark Souls 3. When Dark Souls 3 took the combat design of the first Dark Souls, and it made it more refined. So if that's the case, motherfucker, how in the fuck is duplicating the same combat system to utilize the Dark Souls 3? How in the flipping flying fuck is that revolutionary? All right, now to be fair, I have not yet played Dark Souls 3. Wait a second, you didn't play Dark Souls 3? No wonder why you're so impressed by Elden Ring's aspects. That's because you didn't play Dark Souls 3 and realize that Dark Souls 3 and Elden Ring are fundamentally the same game. Only difference is they plopped you in an open-ended environment. Now, this may come as a surprise to you, Terragon, but I actually have this secret clairvoyant power that I can use to determine mechanics that have been in a game that I haven't played yet. You want to know what it's called? It's called Google. Literally, all the examples that I named in my original video were not in Dark Souls 3. An open world environment. Horseback combat, the ashes of war, the spirit ash system, management of cerulean versus crimson flasks, power wielding. All of those were examples that I named in my initial video, and of those examples, the only one that was ever in a previous Souls game was power wielding, which was in Dark Souls 2, and only Dark Souls 2. It wasn't in Dark Souls 3, it wasn't in Sekiro, and it wasn't in Bloodborne. <laughs> What the fuck is this? Dude, this huge ass environment is just being utilized for dog soul shit. Well, no fucking shit. What? You mean to tell me that the open world in a Souls game is being used for soul stuff? Oh my god, I never would have guessed that. What's next? You're gonna tell me that GTA's open world is being used for GTA shit? Or that fucking Red Dead's open world is being used for Red Dead shit? Or Just Cause's open world is being used for Just Cause shit? Yeah, I, I saw the no fucking shit thing. I get it. But dude, look, man, I'm just gonna be real. Okay, yes, it's only being utilized for Dark Souls stuff, but if you play a game like Far Cry, it's being utilized for open world stuff. That's awesome. If you play a game like Skyrim, it's being utilized for open world things or immersive sim elements. You come to Elden Ring, I'm just doing the same goddamn thing with the formula of Dark Souls, and you have an open world Dark Souls game.
This kid literally utilized all kinds of different elements of the genre, and the only thing it utilized it for was just combat, and that's it. Yeah, I've already explained how it utilizes its environment for more than just straight up fighting, even if fighting is the main focus, but again, it's a fucking Souls game. The thing is though, you're trying to take Elden Ring's open world design and force it into a little box of certain other genres. Like, GTA is a sandbox game. The whole appeal is that there's so much shit that you can do in it. While I wouldn't say any of the specific mechanics are incredibly too developed, it's the fact that there's so many of them in one game and you can basically just dick around and do whatever you want that makes it so appealing. Just Cause is similarly a sandbox game, but instead of focusing on a wide variety of activities, it instead focuses on crazy physics and Michael Bay-esque action combat, and just blowing the hell out of everything in sight. So the open world design in that game is a little bit different as it focuses more on giving you shit to blow up and interact with. Now, you brought up Oblivion and Skyrim earlier. Those games are RPGs where the focus is on the role-playing elements, so no shit, they're gonna make the open world design to suit the role-playing elements. Those are all completely different genres to Elden Ring, which is a Souls game. The main focus of the Souls game is on combat and exploration, so that's what the open world focuses on. Open world design is not a one-size-fits-all philosophy. It needs to be tailored to the genre of game you are making. GTA's world design is made to suit GTA's gameplay, Skyrim's world design is made to suit Skyrim's gameplay, and Elden Ring's world design is made to suit Elden Ring's gameplay. <laughs> This shit is just Dark Souls again! You copying your own formula, but then utilizing it for an open world, we just do the same thing you do in Dark Souls! Again, what exactly is the problem with that? Elden Ring's open world gives you a lot of freedom as to how you tackle its objectives. Plus, the exploration aspect that was in some of the previous Souls games is at its best here because of the open world design. Actually, Elden Ring does not give you freedom to how you tackle objectives. You can't go stealth, you can't go demolition, you can't go all out. You can only tackle objectives the exact same way. You just fight. That's not really what I was talking about in that segment, I was mainly talking about how different objectives can be tackled in different orders, or the fact that you can even skip some if you're so inclined. Like, if you don't want to fight Radagon, you don't have to, as long as you kill two of the other Great Room bosses. Or you could skip past shit like Godric the Grafted. But instead, this dude shifts the goalpost and says, oh, but you have to conquer everything by fighting. Which, even then, Elden Ring has some pretty open-ended combat design. There's several different builds you can go for, several different playstyles you can go for. You can choose to be an up close and personal melee fighter, or you can attack from a distance with things like bows or magic spells. There are several different types of weapons you can use, like some are slow but deal a lot of damage and can easily break enemy stances, while others are weaker but are a lot more quick and agile. You can focus on just raw damage output, or you can try inflicting a variety of status effects like bleed, frostbite, scarlet rot, or poison. You can choose to armor up, block with a shield, and be more tanky, or you can strip down your armor to be more quick and agile and focus on dodging everything. You can utilize different Ashes of War, which does give you different attack moves and combat techniques, despite whatever bullshit you tried claiming earlier. There's a variety of different spirit ashes you can also summon to help you with different boss fights. So yeah, there are plenty of different ways you can go about the combat in this game. And you don't fight in different ways. The, the only main way you fight is mainly just with the base combat mechanics. Well, no fucking shit! Well, duh. Literally every fucking game in existence has you using its base mechanics. If that game is combat focused, then you fight using the base combat mechanics. So, what the fuck is your point? That's really it. Now, you don't really tackle it in different ways in the same way that you would in a game like Killzone Mercenary, where you can conquer things in different ways, different kinds of ways, or Halo, you can tackle things in different ways, or Kingdom Hearts, where you have to use different aspects of the combat mechanics in order to tackle different bosses and functions. And that isn't the case in Elden Ring? Like, my guy, you literally have to get good at the combat mechanics in Elden Ring, otherwise you are not gonna beat the game. And also, weren't you complaining earlier that Elden Ring only let you pass shit by fighting them, when I could literally make that same argument for some of the games 
games you just listed, like in Halo, how the fuck do you think you're getting through that game? I'll give you a hint, you're fucking fighting shit. How do you think you get through Killzone Mercenary? Gasp, you fucking fight shit. Kingdom Hearts, okay, that was the only one of those three games that he listed that I haven't played, so I can't really speak there, but dude, once again, I'm gonna have to ask you to keep that same energy. <laughs> Okay, the Ubisoft formula is flawed, but why is it flawed? A lot of people keep complaining about the Ubisoft formula and complain about it being into multiple games, but they don't really go into details as to why. They just say that it's objectively bad and expect people to just buy it. You even admitted that Just Cause 3 has the Ubisoft formula and does it well. So if there are games that actually do this formula well, then why is it so bad that, honestly, one of the things that I don't like about Elden Ring is that unlike Ubisoft's formula, it doesn't have a lot of the different aspects of its open world environment that you see in Ubisoft games. I never stated that the Ubisoft open world formula was inherently bad. I just said that a lot of games that use it don't utilize it well, because they don't. When it comes to the Ubisoft formula of open world, it's not that it's an inherently bad formula, it's just the way that most companies, including Ubisoft, use that formula is pretty fucking flawed. However, I also stated that the Ubisoft design formula wouldn't work well for Elden Ring because of the kind of game Elden Ring is. It's not the kind of game where you just open up the map, pick an activity, run towards it, and do it. It's a game that actually wants you to explore its open world environment and look around every nook and cranny to find shit. And when you do find it, it's a lot more exciting because it's something you discovered instead of being blatantly pointed out to you on a map. Now, the Ubisoft formula works well for something like Just Cause 3, which is a sandbox game, but as I discussed earlier, different genres have different design philosophies that work for them. That includes the design philosophy of the open world. And I prefer that over Elden Ring's design. So why is that wrong? Why is it wrong for me to prefer that design philosophy over what I see in Elden Ring? I literally never said that you couldn't have a preference for one style of world design over the other. If you just said that you preferred the open world design in other games, that would have been fine. The issue is that you're trying to paint it like it's a concrete flaw with Elden Ring, when it isn't. For example, I don't really like Red Dead 2 all that much. I tried it, it just wasn't my thing. But that doesn't mean I'm gonna say it's an inherently bad game just because it doesn't play to my tastes. Oh, and never knows best, in his Elden Ring video, he stated you can't even play blind. It's actually fucking true! No, it isn't. You can play Elden Ring blind just fine if you want. Like, have you noticed that some of the Sites of Grace have these sort of trails that point you in a certain direction? You know, a mechanic that the game teaches you right from the get-go? Actually, Even Never Knows Best has stood out and spoken out about the fact that you can't really play Elden Ring blind the same way you play Dark Souls 1 blind. So that is blatantly untrue. And yet you never fucking explain why. What exactly about Elden Ring makes it so that you can't play it blind like you can with Dark Souls? Because I just explained a system within Elden Ring itself that does allow you to play it blind. And your only argument, if you can even call it that, is some random motherfucker who says, No, you can't play Elden Ring blind. Like, dude, that's not a fucking argument. If you're ever confused as to where you need to go, just follow the trails from the Sites of Grace and they'll lead you to where you need to go to progress the main story. Of course, if you want to, you can choose to completely ignore them and just fuck around wherever you want to in the open world. It's really up to you. Just to even play this, unlike Dark Souls 1, I can play that blind. I had to look up guides just to play Elden Ring. Yeah, that just sounds like a you problem because, again, the Sights of Grace will guide you where you need to go to progress the main path. 
Actually, it's not just a me problem because other people who commented on Never Knows Best video also had a hard time playing Elden Ring. So they looked up guides and even builds. So people are looking up how to build their character a specific kind of way just to beat certain bosses and also looking up certain guides just to even get through the game. I had to look up a guide just to get further into the game myself. And if they looked up a guide, that's their choice. That doesn't mean they had to or that you couldn't play it blind. Like, if you're gonna bring up the people who decided to bust out a guide to beat this game, then I could just as easily bring up the people who didn't bust out a guide and beat this game blind. The only difference is, I've actually brought up aspects of the game's design that does allow you to play it blind. You, however, have not brought up aspects of the game's design that doesn't allow you to play it blind. Alright, so I'm gonna stop the video here because the rest of it is fucking pointless, either because he keeps repeating shit that I've already responded to, or he goes off on irrelevant-ass tangents. I think it's quite telling when my response to this dude's video is shorter than the video I'm responding to, because so much of this dude's video was him just repeating himself like a fucking broken record. This is by far the worst response video somebody has ever made to me. Hell, even Illusions MD had a better video than fucking this. And it seems Tarragon is just another lol cow on the internet. But I guess the key takeaway here is that not every open world needs to be like a Ubisoft open world, and it should instead focus on complementing the gameplay of the game itself. Anyways, that's gonna be it for this video. If you enjoyed, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more, and tell me what you think about Tarragon not being able to take criticism. Anyways, that's it. Peace!